Greetings, and welcome back, gentles and ladiesmen, to another Shrektastic episode of Star Fox Zero. I'm Mex Paradigm Gamer, and I have a special guest joining me today. Please introduce yourself, sir. Hello. I'm King K. So, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, King K? Like, what are you, what are you known for? Well, I'm known for making reviews, mostly. That's basically what I do. I make reviews on YouTube at my little channel. It's just the King K handle. And I am one-fourth of the Unverse cast. Indeed. He, King K is one of my colleagues on the Unverse cast and a very intelligent fellow who makes some great content. You... I mean, I wouldn't go that far. But... <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure to make sure that we plug your channel here towards the end. But, you know, do go check him out because he, he deserves every view he can get. But I brought him on to the Star Fox Zero playthrough because I thought he might have some interesting things to add. Um, so, King K, could you tell us a little bit more about your experience with the Star Fox series in particular? Well, the first Star Fox game I played was Assault, and that was back when I was a little a wee lad. <laughs> I don't even know how old I was, probably uh, like eight or nine. It was a while ago. And I loved that, but I don't think I loved it for the reason that Nintendo would have wanted. I, I just played the multiplayer a bunch with my friends. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, you know, I can barely remember the single common. player. That's surprisingly Like, my friend Alonzo from Game Mavericks, that was largely his experience with Assault back in the day. I know yeah, a lot of people love the multiplayer in that game. It's un usually, it was unusually fun. Like, I don't know if in, like the developers even had that much pride in the multiplayer mode, but something about just going around in the vehicles with your friends on different maps and just shooting each other, it's just a lot of fun to me. I need to like revisit that, but then I didn't play Star Fox. Oh, I think I played Star Fox Command for like ten minutes, but I don't count that because I barely <laughs> remember that. But you know, I, I, I actually beaten, gotten most of the endings in that game, and I barely remember it. It's been a yeah, while. I don't even know. I think I, I might have rented it back when I could still rent things. Oh yeah. And I just didn't like it, and then I stopped playing it. Yeah, that game's actually. It, like, this game, take, Zero, takes a lot of elements from Star Fox 2, but I think Command, in many ways, is, like, the spiritual successor to Star Fox 2. Because, like, mm -hmm. that sort of strategic gameplay was a huge component of 2, except 2 was a lot shorter and, honestly, I think a lot easier. Which is interesting, because yeah. you don't usually expect the any SNES game to be easier than the DS game, but... I don't know, I should probably <laughs> explain briefly what it is that we're doing here. We are charged with destroying these three missiles before they enter that portal. And I don't know what happens if they make it through. Maybe there's a different I, I know what happens. Um, so when I first played this mission, I... You, by I the got, way, you are expected to fly away from the yeah. missile as it explodes. I didn't know that, so... That actually yeah, happened to me too, over. so don't worry about that. I don't know what it was. I played the mission, and I got two parts of the missile down. And I didn't see that you were supposed to keep shooting it, so I was like, oh, I'll just go get the other ones. And then it, like, flew over into the teleporter, and then <laughs> and then um, Rob is like, oh, well, I guess I have to steer the ship in front of this missile to save everyone, and then Rob dies, and you're like, oh, you failed the mission. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And does he, does he stay dead, or is that just like, oh, you lose, try again? Yeah, it's, it, you try again. Oh. Like, it's not a canon thing. It doesn't okay. progress the story or anything. That, that would have been more interesting, though. It would have. I actually thought it was going to progress the story, but then it just restarted it. Mm. Yeah, I've, I I've, just, yeah, I've still been wrapping up like finals and papers and presentations and stuff, so I haven't gotten to all the paths yet. I've only, had, like at this point, I've done, I've, I've unlocked the Aqua Rosa boss fight, and mm, I did yeah. like the alternate Zonus with the Arwing. I think that's oh, about yeah. all I've got to so far. But, I've done all of them. Mm. It didn't even take that long, honestly. Yeah, I noticed in your review you said it took you about an hour. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're trying to look for what to do, then it might take you a little longer, but I was just fed up, and I'm like, I'm going to look up all the pathways, and I did. Yeah, it's kind of what you have to do for 64, because yeah. they're really terrible at telling you what you're supposed to do. Because, I mean, like, they can tell yeah. you every time you play the game that, to do a barrel roll, but they can't tell you how to actually get on the pathways. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, these were pretty straightforward. Like, the first one's, re like, Aquarosa is really easy to figure out, because, oh, just do the walker on the button. Yep. And then you're at Aquarosa. But 
There's one where, um, I don't know if I should go into this. Like, do you want me to say uh, it often? Um, are you going to... I suppose you might as well, because I'm not going to be able to really comment on that at this point in time. Like, I'll just say one. Just to, um, I think it was in the episode before this, but when you first fight uh, Star Wolf, or, yeah. um, and Peppy gets shot down, mm -hmm. um, if you stop Wolf before he shoots Peppy down, then you go to another place. Okay, is it Fortuna? I think it's Fortuna, All I right. believe. Because that's yeah, one I, of the things I, I did afterwards. That, that was probably going to be one of the paths. Yeah, yeah but I, I didn't. I wasn't good enough at the game to prevent that, so I never went to Fortuna until after I beat the game. Right. But one thing I should be saying about, yeah, I really should be flying away from this missile right now, but I somehow <laughs> didn't do that. Yeah, so that will kill you if you. Like it, it takes out about like half of your health bar. So like if you're really low, you're gonna get killed. But yeah, what I what I really should have been doing is like you can use the walker to shoot them, but it's they also rotate, so it's hard to stand on them. What yeah. you really want to do this is being sped up because I didn't want people to get bored, you know. But what you really should do is press down on the right stick to break, so that you could s sort of stand in place and just shoot at things. You know, otherwise mm -hmm. you could just sort of loop around and until you try again. This is... If I were to play this mission again, I'd probably do a lot better, so I guess that this is one instance where you can kind of see my learning curve with the controls. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, wh what do you think about Star Fox Zero in general? Just to spoil your review, King K. <laughs> um, I unexpectedly really like this game, like, a lot. And it's mostly down to the degree of control it provides, because I've never seen... Because uh, they had motion, they did gyro, gyro stuff in Splatoon, for example, mm -hmm. and I never caught on with that because it just felt really awkward to me, and I just preferred to use the analog control, and that's why going into Star Fox Zero, before I had played it, I was, in my head it was super simple, I'm like, why don't they just give you the option for the analog stick? Because I think a problem with reviews for this game are that they don't, they don't explain how the controls actually work. Exactly. Because I think I said the, something to that effect at the beginning of this playthrough. Because it's not just motion controls. Like, they are right. motion controls, but there's also the fact that you're looking at the gamepad for an extra degree of control. And it's it's not like um, like in 64, you just, or in any Star Fox game for that matter, you just move your ship with the cursor. Right. But that's not how this game works. You move the cursor independently from your ship. Yeah. And I don't think that was explained well enough, and that's why I think a lot of people are against the game, is that they just hear motion controls and then they're, they avoid them. But I love the degree of control because I think it was pulled off really well. Like, there's the occasional, oh, I have to readjust the Yeah, the but thing. that's not real Because, like, it used to be back when motion control pointing aiming was new, that that wasn't even something you could do. Like, yeah. if you're playing Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, you have to sit in a certain way, and you have to point... Con y mm -hmm. You know, you have to point your Wii Remote in a certain way, and it was always... You know, it wasn't that bad, and I played the game you know, many times, and that's never really been a huge deal, but when Skyward Sword came out and introduced that feature of being able to recalibrate your aiming whenever you wanted, that was like, wow, this is a really good addition. Wish it was in the older games, and Star Fox Zero brings that back. Yeah. I've never really been against the inclusion of motion controls as a form of control. But this is the weird game in that department, because I'm not really... In other games, I'm like, it would have been cool if I could use an analog stick, sure. But in this game, I don't think it would have worked very well with an analog stick, even with just the target view. Yeah. I think it would have been a little awkward. But I praise this game for doing motion controls well and in a way that sort of pushes, like, I think it pushes this series forward and me speaking from someone who obviously hasn't spent a lot of time with it. So don't lend my opinion as too much of a credence mm -hmm. for the entire series, but I think it's it lends more control than in any other Star Fox game. I, I think I would definitely agree with that, actually. Because, like, for example, like... The walker, I think, 
the only thing I really issue I really have with it is how the left stick is handled, but even then, it makes more sense when you're in cockpit view. Yeah. The way the left stick handles, but it's just when you're looking at the top screen, it doesn't. It's like you expect to go left and just strafe to the left. Mm -hmm. But I learned later that you can hold L to strafe anyway. Yeah. But it's like, compare that to Star Fox 2, where I don't know if you've ever played Mega Man Legends, King K. I haven't. No, but I think I know, like, have you played, I've seen um, how it plays, but I've never played it. Have you played Agent 9 and S Spyro 3? <sighs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, basically how it works is the D-pad moves you around as the walker, and ah. going left and right strafes left and right, you know, but to actually turn, you press the L and R buttons, and you press Y to shoot, and then I think B jumps and Y dashes forward, so it's... In, in Mega Man Legends has a very similar control scheme with like R1 and L1 and R1 turning and such. Mm. And that was, you know, just before there was dual analog, that was just how shoot, you know, like third person shooters worked. And, I don't know, I guess people didn't really complain about it because that's just how it was. There was new, no dual analog. But it's just yeah. that, that quote you included at the end of your review about Super Mario 64, I think, you know, really, I think describes just because like the way I view it if I'm being totally honest about this game is that to me there's really nothing wrong with these con this these control schemes for these vehicles yeah because like aiming works perfectly there's never any point where it's just like oh this is so totally unresponsive it just doesn't work and there was never any point where it's just like you know moving around the ship feels bad or you know, pulling off barrel rolls and breaking with the right stick feels bad, or shooting with... Everything feels mapped to the right place. It's really mm -hmm. only small... It's very, very small things, like how the left stick on the walker works, or I really have any issues. So when I see people saying, like, these controls just don't work, how dare Nintendo shove this down my throat, it's just like... I can only see that as them not trying hard enough to get yeah. used to them. I mean, at first... It took me a little while to get... Like, I'll yeah. be completely honest. It took me a little while to get used to things. And even when I got used to the controls, I never fully understood what you were supposed to do with target view until a lot later. Yeah. Like, during uh, a Star Wolf fight. I think you're... I always... I think hmm? I had a similar experience with that. Like, I didn't get what it was they wanted me to do with target view until later in the game. And then once I did, the game... It's just suddenly clicked for me, and then it made it worked. But yeah. it's it's so it's not really something you see in any other game. So it's kind of something you have to you kind of have to force yourself to learn a little bit. But anyway, yeah. as you were saying, um, it took me like I fully understood what you were supposed to do with it when you get to a Star Wolf fight later on, and up to that point, I had always had an un unusually hard time with the Star Wolf fights. Right. And I never understood why. Like, I I kept getting really close to death, and I was like, I can never turn to get to them. And then I've had, I realized... I have the same exact problem with Star Wolf in 64. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. But then I thought, like, hmm, I can move the gamepad, like, really far up while I'm turning. And then it was just this epiphany, like, that's why the target view is there, because it never set foot in my mind I'm like so the target view is there so you can circle around them and then use the target view for aiming and mm. it's just once I learned that I was like you know I fully understand these this is great it just kind of sucks that I was uh, almost finished with the game by that point yeah and I guess people just aren't willing like peop this is a complex edition this isn't like a new like gimmick this isn't like a like yeah. wisp power ups or something this is, like, a new degree of control. And I think people just assume in this in games that dual analog is the end-all, be-all yeah. of control. And I don't think that's a healthy mindset, even though it's an understandable one. I mean, like, just because yeah, we've had sense. it for a long time and it works well doesn't mean that, like, gyroscope technology or motion controls isn't the way forward. It's just that people have probably... Like, humans don't respond well to change... And I think it's just going to take some getting used to. I don't know if yeah. it'll ever take over the industry. Like, I feel like dual analog is something that's going to stick around for a long time. Because you want to know what's weird about that. Because, like, I really think it just boils down 
to what you're socialized to play games on. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Because it's just... I, I realized after I recorded episode 4 of the um, of this playthrough that I didn't really play dual analog controlling games before I played Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. So my first mm -hmm. exposure to like a game with like a real shooting control scheme was motion controlled. And yeah. That, that has, I, I feel like, and I didn't really learn how to use dual analog, which sounds weird, but I didn't really u learn to use that for a shooting game until I played Uncharted. When, mm. Like maybe three years later in like 2013. So it, 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 it would have been like five years later. So it's... And I've also heard stories from people who are primarily PC gamers saying that they cannot play a shooting game with dual analog. They have to use a mouse. Yeah, you know, I can actually speak a little bit to that. It's just, okay, when using a mouse and keyboard, it's hard to explain, but it's, like, infinitely more precise than using analog. And yeah. I, can, I can deal with analog on consoles because I grew up as a console person. So I'm really used to that, but like, since getting a PC and gaming a lot on it, it is a lot more precise. Yeah, I would say like equally as precise as motion controls, but people would definitely argue with that. Yeah, and it's and by the way, I heard that from Eric, you know, my brother, who's he he's big into PC. He sort of like you, like once a PS4 and Xbox One were announced, he wasn't impressed, so he went PC. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he tells me that you know people will not PC gamers also ha are sticklers for their 60 FPS. Like I've heard yeah. stories of reviewers who will not play a game if it's in 30 FPS. And it's just mm -hmm. like to me, it's just like I could barely notice the difference. So it's just like yeah. yeah, well I can barely notice the difference too. Like I notice the difference, but it never bothers me. Like I just I think Uncharted 4 is in 30 FPS. I just played through that entire thing, didn't even notice. So mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> How is Uncharted 4? That's great. I love it. I heard that they it were going to make it open world. You know, I can actually link it to this, because I was playing that, and I was using analog to aim, and I, it mm -hmm. took a little getting used to, because I had just played this game, right? and I think something else, and I just tried to use dual analog again, and I'm like, oh god. But <laughs> eventually I got used to it, and it was fun. But that just goes to show that I'm so used to these... Like, this just shows you what I think of these control sets in my mind, is that they're an evolution of control. Yeah. And I guess I just understand that, like, not to be arrogant or something, but I think I just understand that a lot better than some people, because they probably are still used to dual analog, and that's all I've known, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. It just might take a little bit of time for people to get used to it, or they might never get used to it. Like, I've heard in reviews that this boss in particular, the people have had trouble with. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about people. it quickly, because, like, there were two bosses in this game that I did have trouble with. This mm -hmm. one was kind of one of them. I don't think it ever actually killed me or anything, but it did take me a while. It's like basically what you gotta do, in, in case you haven't been watching <laughs> closely enough, is you gotta shoot down the legs to knock down the boss, then you go on top of it and hit those little stalks on the top. And um, I guess coming into this, I was kind of playing it with an assault mindset. Like there's a very similar boss in Star Fox Assault on Planet Katna. By the way, I think I'm using target view here. But it's just, in that game, like, you're also on a landmaster, and there's a giant disc-shaped walker enemy that you're supposed to kill. And But in that game, what you're supposed to do is get on top of it and then shoot the core from there. When in this mm -hmm. game, if you stay on top of it while it gets up, you get hurt for some reason. Like, it knocks you off somehow. Yeah. So it's just, and this is also where your landmaster unlocks the ability to fly for short periods of time. So what, what they, I guess what they expect you to do is to get onto the side closest to the stocks you need to shoot, knock it down, and just, just wail on it, but it's... I know for some reason I had a hard time getting wrapping my head around that, but it felt more like me just not understanding how to fight the boss rather than the boss being designed in a weird cockamamie way, you know? Yeah, I mean, my first time with this boss, again, I... <laughs> I really don't want to sound arrogant or something, but I really had no trouble with him. And I don't know, like, I just clicked with me immediately. I was like, oh, let me take down the legs where the antennas are and then shoot him down. And it, it didn't even take me that long either, and I didn't even get close to death. And I played it, and I'm like, I don't understand why people had trouble with it, but I guess 
if you're conditioned to think that you should land on it, then... Yeah. I don't I know, in my mind, I was just like, they just introduced this flight thing, so they probably expect me to fly, and that, I just did that, but... Yeah, I mean, like, even then, it's like, I really should have learned the first time it knocked me off that there was a different strategy was required. Yeah. You know? So, like, I don't know, I guess... I guess I was just having so much fun flipping around as the Landmaster and I didn't really think to try it. This was kind of late at night when I recorded this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um... What, I guess while, while I have you here still, what did you think of the boss right before Venom? Um... Which one is that? The, like, uh, is that oh, is that the thing that shoots lasers and spins the thing around? Where, the boss where you have to hack it to kill it. Oh, the... Yeah, that where you're... Okay. The one, that was you the other one I had the back of it, I right? kind of have a beef with. Yeah. Okay, because I didn't have too much trouble with that, actually. It did... I think it took me... I think I actually died to the boss itself before you had mm -hmm. to hack it. But once I got to the point where I needed to hack it, um, I got on to his back pretty easily. And I don't know, like, I could see where people would have trouble, definitely, though, because he's constantly moving and, like... Yeah, I mean, like, my issue with it was just trying to land on that teeny tiny little flap, you know? Yeah, they could have used some more room on that thing. Because it's, like, it's too high for you to just jump up there as the, as the max. You kind of have to, like, fly into him and transform at the last minute. Yeah. And I had the damnedest time trying to do that for some reason. So, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. So I guess we're getting close to the end of this episode here, so is there anything else you'd like to say about Star Fox Zero, King K? I mean, I assume people have been watching all these parts and have seen most of the, well, yeah, most of this game by now. And to people, I said this in my review and I just want to say it again, to people that are still hesitant because of the motion controls or just for any reason at all, I, th I would say that you should try it before because I was one of the people who was outspoken saying they should have included an option for analog control because forcing you to use a control is really stupid because I likened it to inverted controls, like what if you were just forced to use inverted yeah. controls, but it's having played it it's not like that at all like, it's something you have to experience, sort of, to get a hang of. And I feel mm. like people should at least give it a chance. Despite what people might be saying, like, it's broken, or all that. I'd say it's down to perspective, and really, I think the controls work fine. I think people should give it a, sh should give it a shot for themselves to see what they think of it. Alright, well said. So, uh, once again, Silver's just sort of wrapping up uh, Fachina here. You know, this, this level was... In many ways, kind of reminiscent of the 64 level, but also kind of like the assault level, too. Mm. But, yeah. So, I guess that brings us to the end of this episode. So, King K, just remind us again where we can find you. You can find me at, if you just search King K, you can find me. Uh, I think my handle is still Kingdom Clanad with two Ks. And. Mm. I'm pretty, yeah, you can find me there. I need to figure out how to change my handle, but I do reviews and all that good stuff. My Twitter should also be at Kingdom Clanad with two Ks. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the Unverse cast, which you can find on YouTube as well. Yep. So, um, yeah, be sure to go check out King K. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now? Right now, um, I'm working on Bloodborne. And Dark Souls 3 in my ongoing, I, call, I guess, a marathon of the Souls series that I've recently gotten into. And I also might be working on some stuff for some newer games, but I'm not too sure right now. But for right now, my priorities are Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3. If you're into that series, you might want to check it out, because those are in the pipeline. All right. Well, thanks for being on, King K. And yeah, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure for me as well. So join me. I'm going to have more guests coming up in the next few parts, gentles and ladiesmen. Next time, we're going to have uh, a another, I guess, outspoken YouTuber for underrated games named Nick on Aquamagna, who uh, I think will also have some interesting perspective to share with us about Star Fox Zero. So 
Until then, I'm X Paradigm Gamer, and that's King K. Hello. And uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.